if I focus on this glass of water right now, anything that's happening in the background is happening in the background. It's disappearing into the background. If there was something over there that I didn't like and I kept focusing and my gaze was on it, my attention is on that. But as soon as I withdraw my attention from that and place it on this glass of water that's in front of it, now anything in the background simply happens. I'm not concerned with it. Quasi here. And in today's video, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step procedure of letting go and learning how to stay as awareness. So if you're someone who struggles to stay as awareness and you get really caught up in your thoughts and feelings, this is going to be super helpful for you. So stick around to the very end of this video and let's go right ahead and get started. Real quick before I get started, I have a, my own personal newsletter. If you'd like to join that, I send stuff that I can't really share on the YouTube channel. The link for that will be in the pinned comments down in the comment section below. Without further delay, let's go right ahead and get started. I'm really excited to do today's video because when I did the last video on letting go, there were a lot of questions you guys had. And some of the questions were like, so how do you not get entangled with all of these feelings? You know, how do you actually let go? I understand the acceptance procedure, but you know, how do I not get so involved with the feelings? Now, when your focal point becomes, let's not get involved with the feelings, you start to resist those, those thoughts and feelings that you don't like. For example, with anxiety, with you know, uh, getting in your head and judging yourself, especially if you find that sometimes you are in social settings, for example, and you get in your head a lot and you, know, you start to judge yourself and then you get in this negative feedback loop, right? Like you're in a social setting and you'll be like, oh no, did I say the wrong thing? Someone asks you a question, you answer it. Oh my God, did I say the wrong thing? You see like an expression, like a reaction in their face. They go like, mm. and then you just, for the whole conversation, instead of being able to let that go, you start to focus on that one wrong thing that you said. And it kind of gets you in your head throughout that whole conversation, right? Or it could be in other instances. One little thing happens in your business and it ruins your whole day. You can't get rid of it. One little thing happens in your relationships or with someone that you held dear and then you can't, you just can't let that go. So in this video, we're going to be talking about a no BS way, a real simple way that you can shift your focal point, start to focus on the right things and be able to let go, be able to stay as awareness, which is what we're going to discuss as your natural state reside as that because believe it or not, this is how we used to be when we were a kid. But then as we grew up, guess what? Society gave us all of these different ideas and told us all of these different things, how we should be, how we shouldn't be, how to conduct yourself, how you shouldn't conduct yourself. And then that conditioned us and started to uh, make us very reactive because we identified with certain ideologies. To get started, I want to I wanna address the fact that most people, because of this conditioning, they start to move with their thoughts and feelings. Based on what we believe to be right and what we believe to be wrong, we start to move with all of these different thoughts and feelings that we have. For example, I give you that social setting example. You know, if you believe that you're bad socially and you have been trying to improve socially, uh, if you say one wrong thing, then you begin judging yourself. If you start to you know, want to improve in sales, you don't get one deal and you think that everything's going to be like that. You're like, oh, I'm doomed. You know, my business is going to suck. I'm never going to make any sales. And this giving of energy to the undesired outcome makes that grow stronger and stronger. Okay. And we just don't know how to get away from that. Like, how do you stop focusing on what you don't want, right? How do you shift your focal point? So in order to understand that, I'm going to share with you a four step process of letting go. Before I get to that four step process of letting go, I want us to understand the goal of this four step process. And simply the goal of this four step process is to get you out of reacting and giving energy to things that you don't want to give energy to and become more proactive. Because believe it or not, if you want to become a conscious creator of your life, if you want to create your own life and your own destiny, you have to become more proactive and more conscious, right? If we're becoming reactive and we give energy away to someone else, you know, someone said something bad and then we react to it, we're, it's, it's hurting the person who's reacting more than it's hurting the person who's proactive, right? Who proactively says something aggressive to provoke you. And when you give away your energy, then you subject yourself to their script. So for example, if a bully comes in and tells you something, they want to upset you. Their goal is to upset you. But if you get upset, 
Because guess what? It's your choice whether or not you get upset or not. Because this is all happening internally. Anything physical, like physical pain is not a choice, right? If someone pinches you, you're going to feel that pain. But if someone says words to you, then you have a choice of whether or not you get offended by it. So, you know, it's, it's like that famous saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. So you can choose to not let words hurt you. But most of us don't know how to do that because we get up here and we start to focus in on the wrong things. So the goal of this four step process is to learn to shift our focal point from, you know, reacting, giving up power, giving our energy away to things that are out of our control, things that we didn't choose and bring it back to the things that we want. Okay. So let's get started with this simple four step process. And uh, I hope this is helpful for you. So step number one, whenever a feeling or a thought arises, what do you do? What do you naturally do? If you don't like it, then you're quick to react to it. You're like, oh no, this is bad. Let's get rid of it. Oh no, anxiety again. Oh no, I don't like this feeling. Oh, I need to run away from this. But when there's a feeling that we do like, then we're like, oh, let's accept this. I like this. This feels good. So when we do that, we're actually giving more energy to the things that we don't like than the things we do like, right? So if you resist unwanted feelings, unwanted thoughts, it starts to grow more and more. And if you accept things, then things run their course. It organically enters your life and it goes out of your life, right? Just like a change in weather. You know, one day it's really sunny and you like it. Another day it's not so sunny. It's kind of cloudy and rainy. And cloudy and rainy isn't necessarily bad. We label it as bad because we expect certain things. So the next time something bad arises, instead of fighting it and resisting it, just simply accept it. This too has permission to exist. That's the self-talk that I have, right? If something arises within me that I don't like, that feels bad, that's okay. This has permission to exist as well. That's step one, full, complete, utter acceptance of everything that is. When you do that, you stop giving it so much energy, right? Your energy is intact. You're proactive. You're not reacting to it. Nothing can, nothing can shake you. You become unshakable. That's step one. Step two, is whatever keeps arising, start to watch it. You acknowledge it and you watch it. Oh, there is this feeling that arises. There is this dislike of this feeling that is also being watched. And there is this thought that is trying to justify this feeling that is being watched. Every single judgment you have about that feeling, those are being watched as well. Oh, the character doesn't like this feeling. It's not me. It's not me that doesn't like this feeling. There is this dislike of this feeling. There is, I'm not saying I don't like this feeling, right? I'm not identifying it as me. These thoughts and feelings aren't yours. They simply arise. You are beyond the thoughts and feelings. The very fact that you can watch and observe the thoughts and feelings means that they're not you. They're not yours. Okay. Because remember this, anything that you can watch and observe cannot be you. If I can watch this glass of water and I can observe it, therefore it is not me. If I can look at this body, therefore it is not me. It is not I. There is body. There are thoughts and there are feelings. They exist. These are all being watched. That is the second step where you start to tap into awareness. When you tap into awareness and stay as awareness, then thoughts and feelings stop existing in the foreground of your life. For most people, their traumas, their past, their whatever experience that they've had in the past that you know, they didn't like, those become the foreground of their lives. Those start to define their lives. And it doesn't define their lives in the way that they would want, unfortunately, because most people contextualize it in their experience in a negative way. 
So for example, if I look into the past and I've gotten bullied in the past and I'm like, oh, I'm socially awkward because I got bullied. I'm like this because my childhood was bad. So most people don't have the ability to positively contextualize it and fit it in their worldview. Because if you were to at least positively do it, then your life would unfold in the way that, you know, in a, in a more positive light. But we can't do that. So the least we can do is just watch them. And when you watch them, they no longer exist in the foreground. Because again, the mere act of watching is disidentifying. Right? So that's step two. Whatever is arising, just watch it. Step three. Anything subsequent that arises, whatever is arising, they are all being watched. And we're simply acknowledging the watching. In this step, what we're doing is we're watching the watching of it. There is a watching of this thought even. There is an observing of this thought even. There is a witnessing of all of this phenomenon. This process is called self-inquiry. When you begin to peel away the layers and you keep taking a step back and you stop identifying with everything, even the watching. So please take a moment to reflect on this. There is the body, there is the mind, and there is that which that watches the mind and body. When we feel something in the body, then that's, that phenomenon is occurring in the body. When we think something in the mind, that phenomenon occurs in the mind. But then when we watch the mind and the body, that phenomenon occurs beyond mind-body. Okay? So anything that we watch in pure awareness, when we shift from focusing on, oh, what thoughts I'm having, what feelings I'm having. So, so check this out. Right now, there is a feeling. My focus, my attention is on the feeling right now. There is feeling of anxiety. My attention is on the feeling. There is thought that anxiety is bad. My attention is on the thought. Step three is, wait a second. There is a watching of the thought and the feeling. Ah, my attention is on the watching. So when my attention is on the watching and observing, and I acknowledge, look, there is a watching. Now, all of the feelings in the body and all of the thoughts in the mind, they disappear into the background. They simply happen as a natural phenomenon of life, like the natural weather of life. I want you to try this for a second. Whatever you're feeling in the body right now, it's fully accepted, it's watched. My attention is on feeling. Now, there is thought about the feeling. There, is, there are opinions trying to justify the presence of the feeling. That is watched as well. My attention is now on the thought. But now I realize there is a realization that there is a watching of the thought and feeling. There is something that observes and watches it. There is something that is attending to it. My attention is on that. And when my attention is on that, I completely forget about the thought and feeling. It disappears into the background. It runs its course, comes in and goes away. That is the letting go process. Do you see that? Do you see the difference? And when I do that, I'm no longer reacting to it. It's, it's like if I focus on this glass of water right now, Anything that's happening in the background is happening in the background. It's disappearing into the background. If there was something over there that I didn't like and I kept focusing and my gaze was on it, my attention is on that. But as soon as I withdraw my attention from that and place it on this glass of water that's in front of it, now anything in the background simply happens. I'm not concerned with it. That is what happens when you place your attention on awareness and on the watching. How beautiful is that? And now you become the master of your destiny. Nothing bothers you. You become untouchable. So in this simple process, we simply watch the watching of anything. Our attention is now concerned with 
the watching of the watching, the observing. Okay, so step four is that, is simply stay in the watching of the, of the attention. You're attending to the attention. It's kind of crazy to think about and intellectualize because this is beyond intellect. You are simply shifting your attention. Your attention is shifting from the content to the context in which everything occurs. And then the content disappears into the background and it runs its course. In this simple manner, we can stop being so reactive to life and let life happen organically and naturally. Because believe it or not, whatever you want to achieve will happen. You just need to get out of the way. And I learned this important lesson by playing golf. It's, it's when we get, when we stop trying to manipulate ourselves into certain positions in the golf swing and just get out of the way of our swing happening. You are, the club itself has a weight and the club drops and hits the ball itself. Gravity does most of the work anyways. You just need to get out of the way. And when you get out of the way and you make it natural, you, re you revert to your natural movements. You don't have to do something that you've never done before. What's a natural swinging motion you can do? You can do it with a baseball bat. You can do it with chopping an ax. No one teaches you, hey, this is the form to chop an ax. But people try to teach you like, oh, this is how you should manipulate your body in the golf swing. This is what you need to do. No, it's a natural movement. You can do it. You just need to find a way that makes sense to you, that is natural to you. So in everything in life, when we stop trying to overcomplicate things and we simply just focus on the fundamentals, on what's natural, this is my natural state. When you're born, the first thing you realize is that there is awareness. There is something that watches. There is existence. That is our fundamental state. And when we get to that fundamental state, it's, guess what? P place of pure peace, pure joy. So with that, I conclude this video. I hope this was helpful. I hope these four steps made sense to you. I'm going to do a quick recap. I wrote them down and uh, I'm just going to read out the steps to you. Step one is getting full and pure acceptance. If you don't have full and pure acceptance, you're always going to be reactive. You're always going to fight against something. So whatever arises, it has permission to arise. It arises in consciousness. It disappears out of consciousness. It's just a, just a movement within consciousness for a split second. It arises from nothing, enters consciousness, does its thing, disappears out of consciousness into nothing. That's step one. Fully accept whatever is arising. Step two is watch it. Any thought and any feelings that arise, simply watch it. So now we're shifting from we've accepted it, now we simply watch it. Ah, there is this feeling. There is feeling. There, is, there are thoughts. That's watched. And then anything subsequent that arises, there is thought about this feeling. There is thought about thought. That too is being watched. We are slowly taking a step back from all of it. So for example, in the, in the social setting there that you're at and you're in your head, you, you feel anxious, you've said something wrong and you feel like you're dwelling on that too much, you're giving it too much energy. Even the dwelling on it is being watched. Even the judgment of it is being watched. You're not trying to stop the judgment. Believe me, you're not trying to do anything. You're simply shifting your attention because all of these natural reactions are coming from habit, right? We've been habitually judging ourselves. We've been habitually belittling ourselves. That too is watched. These are all watched. And once there is a grasping of the watching of the content, then we begin to watch the watching. There is watching, there is existence. And once you reach that state, then everything starts to slowly disappear into the background. And once that happens, there are no problems. You become completely at peace, at ease, and you become more conscious. You become a conscious creator. Then you can shift your attention to anything that you want. So with that, I conclude this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this, if this was actually helpful for you. Uh, I've done this video because people were like, well, how do you, how do you even watch? You know, it's like, uh, let me ask you this. How do you raise your hand? You just do it. You know you have it. It's, it's natural. 
It's your birthright. You know how to do it. You just need to exercise it. It's, it's, uh, it's weakened over time because of a lack of use. So let me know what you thought of this. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that little bell there so you're notified of any new video that I put up. And uh, also, if you'd like to work closer together with me, my team, and our flagship Reality Mastery Program, uh, you can apply for that. The link for that is in the description below. Our free Facebook group is open for you to take advantage of. The link for that is also in the description. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Peace.